everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to just tune in, listen to my videos, leaving me comments, leaving me feedback, leaving me a thumbs up. That always helps. And also um, taking the time to come over to Instagram and following my baby bump progress. So if you are new to my channel, you're joining at a very interesting time. I am a mom-to-be, uh, currently in my second trimester, but the fitness-related stuff, the workouts and so on, those things um, continue all the way through my pregnancy. So if you are here for weight loss-related content or bodybuilding-related content, you just want to thicken up and put on some lean muscle, you are in the right place. Um, please do not feel like I'm not going to be giving you what you need. And also, if you take the time to browse through my channel, I literally have over 300 videos um, of fitness related stuff go through the channel by playlist and I assure you you're gonna find what you're looking for there's information about macros um, how to count your macros what's a macro how to read a food label how to use that to gain or lose weight I have different routines you can do at the gym outdoors at home I mean there's just content on here so take a few minutes if you are really looking for content to do exactly that and then I'm also working with the sunlight. Um, I already explained, you know, this whole lighting situation where my ha the house is located. I just have to work with what I get. And I'm also recording when I feel really good. So today is one of those days I'm actually feeling good um, because, you know, pregnancy really does take a toll on you. So I competed in April. Um, I competed on April 30th. I started my cut. Uh, my contest prep in November of 2015 and the process was over months so within that time I was dieting down really hard I lost a lot of weight I basically lost about 25 pounds <laughs> and um, also I got pregnant so things happen and I felt compelled to kind of talk to you um, especially if you are a female uh, bodybuilder you're aspiring to become a bodybuilder and when I say bodybuilder like you you're trying to improve your physique and then you're ultimately thinking about competing so with my pregnancy brain I decided to go ahead and jot some notes down so if you find that I'm looking down it's because I do not want to um, forget certain things that I want to share with you I have about five um, points in here I have made mistakes on my cuts um, and I'm talking to you right now and I'm just remembering something that I need to note. But so that will make it six um, points. So let me just note this really quick. And I'll get back to you guys. That's it. All right. Um, a message that I want to put out there as someone who has actually competed is that you do not have to compete to be legit. You know, to be a legit bodybuilder there's no criteria believe it or not there's no criteria for stepping on stage anyone can step on stage okay but the thing is if you're gonna spend the money for registration and the tanning and the suit and all that stuff you want to bring the best package so that is why the caliber of athletes you see on stage they kind of all fit a certain criteria but for the most part there is there isn't a prerequisite for getting on stage okay so competing does not make you um, more legit than someone who ch chooses not to compete um, and you do not have to compete you do not have to step on stage to have a great physique I know a lot of people who look amazing and they will never step foot on stage for whatever reason and then also um, just my little opinion right here um, I really honestly feel like cutting going through the process of bulking successfully and cutting successfully does legitimize your whole bodybuilding experience because cutting is a totally different ballgame from bulking and it's really really brutal even when it's done right so my second point here is that even if you do it properly um, cutting can still be a nightmarish um, experience or it can be the highlight of your whole journey. I think for me, I am somewhere in the middle, okay? Because I've had great times, I've had good times, and I've really had low points. And you guys already saw me go through um, that phase with my cutting. And then, um, honestly, contest prep is not for everyone. I even wondered if contest prep was for me. I did it, I survived it, but it's really a grueling process, even though 
even when it's done properly. So just a little bit about myself. I am not an expert. I'm not a medical expert. I'm not um, any kind of expert. What I'm sharing here is simply based on my experience and also um, the expert advice that I got from people who have done this before many times, actual coaches in the field. And I'm just sharing that information with you because I feel like, um, you know, this is a good place for people to come and get the information. So why not have the best info to share with you guys? The first mistake people tend to make when they're cutting is cutting calories too quickly. Um, remember, this is a process. Just like how bulking is a process, cutting is also a process. So don't start your cut phase by cutting a thousand calories from your diet. You're going to lose glycogen, which is essentially um, stored up carbs. You're going to definitely lose fat. Definitely, that's the first thing your body goes to when you're trying to burn off um, you know, ex excess, in terms of your macros, but excess fat, your body's gonna burn off fat. And um, But the downfall to cutting so quickly and cutting so much is that you will also lose muscle. And what's the point of losing muscle when you would have bulked and you would have built and you really do not want to lose as much. You will a little bit, but you do not want to lose as much. So one mistake to avoid is cutting your calories too quickly and um, by too much. When I started in November of 2015, I started gradually. I started by cutting, you know, it really wasn't a lot, 150 calories um, for the first couple of weeks. And then I, I went up to 250 and then I went to 500 calories and I kind of um, worked around that. So it was a process for me. Um, the second mistake uh, some people make, and guys do that as well, uh, is completely omitting heavy training. Remember, there's a, sometimes the old school way is really the right way or a solid way of doing things because those um, steps from the older bodybuilders, those things have been tried and true. When you lift heavy, when you do the compound movements like, you know, the squats and the deadlifts and things like that, those things help you build up your muscle mass, um, also helps with your strength gain. So when you cut out heavy training completely, what starts happening is that you start losing strength and you start losing muscle uh, fullness. So yeah, a lot of coaches will tell you, go ahead and start um, switch around your routines and go high rep, um, do high rep exercises. And there is a place for high rep in your cut phase, there is, but you don't want to totally um, dismiss what you have been doing prior to your cutting. And you also do not want to dismiss heavy um, training because you will experience a decline in your strength and in your muscle fullness. And I mean, who really wants that? Okay, as a, a competing bodybuilder, who really, really wants that? Train wisely. Try to incorporate more intensity type techniques like um, supersets, drop sets, whatever. Okay, whatever techniques you want to apply in your training, but do not completely do um, a 180 on your, your workout routine. There is truth in training as you would you know when you're bulking all right but of course um switch up your um your routines with the supersets and drop sets and whatever guys you whatever you do uh when you're doing your regular training all right the third um mistake um that people make is that they fail to track and they fail to measure you see this guys you have seen this from the very beginning um this is just a regular notebook so i'm a teacher and i got one of these extra notebooks laying around um, I feel like a lot of people, especially women, um, you feel like you need the fancy stuff to get started. And if you don't have the fancy stuff, the fancy notebooks, the fancy outfits, whatever, you're not going to get anywhere. And I can see how that might be a little bit of incentive, but that should not be a roadblock. Get a notebook, get any notebook and start tracking, st start documenting your progress. I measured in terms of stepping on a scale, like every two weeks or three weeks or whatever, depending on where I was. And I also used a tape measure. Um, you wanna measure your dimensions. I The most popular video on my channel is about how I put on seven inches on my butt. And people ask me, how do you know? Well, I know that because I have been documenting and I've been sharing with you guys. Um, this really does help you um, through your cut phase. Um, 
The other thing with that too, another mistake along that line is that a lot of people like to eyeball, they step in front of the mirror and they start eyeballing and then they get on a scale now and then and they start eyeballing their food and they just wing and eyeball everything. And what happens, one day you wake up, you take your measurements and you realize you're stagnant. You would have reached some kind of plateau. Um, if you have something solid, like documentation, you can always go back and see where you can make adjustments in your diet and your training. So start from the very beginning of your bulk or your cut um start documenting your initial weight your your measurements take it as it is don't you know don't try to make make it seem what it's not take it as it is as genuine as you can okay so my recording time stopped at 12 minutes i'm using my phone and hopefully this is the last time i use my phone to record anything but um still working on the camera trying to get this camera here but what I was saying is that um, do not um, make your statistic seem what they're not, okay? Start as genuinely as you can with your numbers and track, you know, track every four weeks because at, at the beginning you are going to lose weight a little bit faster, but track everything and um, there will be a point where you actually, you're going to reach a plateau that happened to me, it happens to a lot of people, it happens to everyone. And you're, you're going to need to do something differently with your workout and your diet. And that is where documentation comes in very handy. Now, to the ladies. Um, this is something that I learned from experience and <laughs> I'm sharing this with you. When you are cutting, your hormonal level will be so crazy. There will be times you'll be crying, you'll be shaking, you'll be happy one minute, you'll be sad the next minute. You'll just be going through a roller coaster of emotions. Um, I always doubted it you know I doubted it until it actually happened to me and I'm sharing it with you um, your hormones are gonna be crazy now with that as a woman there is gonna be some kind of consequence if you are not using some kind of birth control you might end up with a baby go ahead and make sure you use some kind of backup because things happen and I wonder why people do not talk about this more more openly um, I think there's a stigma on women who make such open statements. Um, I don't know why. Um, just be cautious with that. Uh, the thing about cutting too, people always say, you know, they do not, they do not even have the energy to be um, sexually active because it, it, cutting takes a toll on you. I'm going to tell you, not everyone is the same, and I'm going to leave it like that. Okay, but with your actions, they're going to be. They're going to be um, some kind, you know, they're going to be consequences to your actions. So um, please be precautious. Uh, just know that something, uh, things like that can happen. I remember when I started feeling like I was going to have a nervous breakdown because of my cut. You know, I was feeling hot and cold and I was crying one minute and, I, you know, I was just like really a mess and all over the place. Um, my doctor and I had a conversation and um, in that conversation I had some enlightenment. And um, I'm just going to leave it like that because I do not want to get too much into my personal details. But just know that there is the possibility of failed birth control if you are doing, um, if you are in that and you're doing a contest prep. I mean, I was dieting down hard. I competed pregnant. I did not even know. But I was dieting down really, really, really hard. And yeah, that's for that. Okay, so my penultimate point here, number five. Uh, just know that your social life, your social interaction will be um, affected tremendously. Cutting, the, the period of cutting, that phase is a very self-centered period. You are in a position where you have to be careful with everything that you consume and everything that you do. Um, alcohol, like if you like margaritas, for example, and you like having the regular happy hour on Fridays, all of those things change. Um, you cannot afford to do that if you are trying to take your contest prep uh, seriously. If you go out, you might be that one person with Tupperware, okay, at the restaurant. It happens. Um, not everyone will understand that. Um, it always, it's always good to have supportive friends and family it's always good to take the time to explain to them exactly what you're going through for the people who do not understand they're always going to have words like you're trying to be a perfectionist you're trying to be um you're taking this too seriously why don't you live a little bit i mean all of those things i've heard myself but if you are trying to become legit and you're really trying to um you know do well with your contest prep 
you cannot afford certain things, uh, especially with regards to your social life. So, and then last but not least, the last little point that I actually scribbled down on camera, I one mistake that I made too, that I really, if I have to do this all over again, I will do it differently. I started cutting in November of 2015. My show was in April 30th of 2016. I would never go on this long, drawn out, cut I will you know I I gradually went through it but there were times when I became so weak I was so tired of I was frustrated I know now that what I would do in the future is actually cut and maintain cut and maintain if I can do that at least give myself enough time to do that um, for two phases I think that will be much better than going on a long drawn out cut so that's it um that's what i have based on my experience um i know there are tons and tons of points out there you know bodybuilding.com is a great source for bodybuilding related stuff but as i said uh throughout that phase and it was my very first time cutting i lost 25 pounds i became really small and um you know that was it i've had it i was tired i didn't want to do it anymore and honestly, the comp the competing bug did not get me. I from the get go, I said, you know, I'm gonna do if I do any t any show, I'm gonna do two shows. So I have one show under my belt. Um, the goal was to get up to 160 pounds, but I am currently pregnant. I have not lost sight of that goal. Uh, if you want to see me do it, you'll just have to stick around. You'll have to stick around to see my journey. I do not plan to lose myself throughout my pregnancy at all. I really want to continue to be a good example for a lot of you out there who are looking for motivation and also my family and my friends. Um, you really do not have to let yourself go. And that is what this phase, this period of mom-to-be is all about. It's continuing with fitness and health and all that stuff. You're still going to get the content, um, but there, we're going to have challenges. So let's see how Carib Spice does. Um, with everything going on, I appreciate you guys. I hope these pointers help. Look in the description for other videos. And if you're not following me on Instagram, you're missing all the cute baby bum pictures. And they're only going to get better because I have photo shoots coming up and all that stuff. But follow me at the Carib Spice on Instagram. And until next time, peace. <laughs>